What's up, my people? It's time once again for a Get Ready Productions video. And it is not the best video that I'd like to talk about, but it is a good video to reveal how things work in the United States of America, if you don't already know. If you haven't heard, the family of Malcolm X, namely five daughters, have hired a Benjamin Crump to file suit against the NYPD, New York Police Department, the CIA Central Intelligence Agency, and the FBI Federal Bureau of Investigation in relationship to the murder death of Malcolm X, known as El Haj Malik, El Shabazz. So let me tell you how this whole thing is beginning to come together and how it will potentially move forward. If you aren't aware, Malcolm X was shot 21 times at the Autobahn Ballroom in Manhattan, New York, February 21st, 1965. He was 39 years old. And there was a lot of activity, if some of you are not aware of the COINTELPRO, counterintelligence uh, program, going on in especially the African-American community targeting various leaders. And regardless of their religious beliefs or whatever organizations they were a part of, they were in a full-fledged attack on these leaders and they intended to uh, nullify their ability to mobilize the masses. You hear me talk about it all the time or just straight up assassinate them. And so how we have come to figure out how this has all come together, how the pieces fit in this puzzle Raymond Wood, an undercover police officer for the NYPD, on his deathbed, confessed to his activity and involvement in setting up El Haj Malik El Shabazz, most of you know as Malcolm X. And because he was in fear of his life and his freedom, he only released a letter after he passed away uh, implicating the involvement of the three alphabet agencies that I spoke of. And he said that his involvement entailed targeting Malcolm X's security and eliminating their ability to protect him on the night of February 21st when he was giving a speech. And so how they were set up the way that was done is being revealed more and more as this lawsuit goes forward, but they were targeted as security as being involved in some criminal behavior. And so uh, a few days before the speech was given, I believe they were arrested, therefore limiting the number of, I guess, trusted people in Malcolm X's circle, and that is to be de debated as well, because the Nation of Islam, but at that time the Malcolm had broken away from them, was just riddled with people who were uh, pretty much pawns for these agencies. And so what happened was Malcolm didn't have security to check the people that were attending the speech, which is what the Nation of Islam would normally do. But again, he wasn't a part of the nation, so he, he had limited support, and that support was dwindling because of the attack and targeting by these alphabet agencies. And so uh, one or more people were allowed to get in the Autobahn ballroom with guns and were able to assassinate slash murder Malcolm X. So right now, Malcolm X has uh, five daughters. He actually had six, 
one passed away in 2021, that are involved in the legal uh, process of targeting the CIA, the FBI, and the NYPD. All three agencies are part of a $100 million lawsuit. And uh, Ben Crump is leading the, the legal team. And I'll talk more about Ben and what uh, my concerns are about him and his safety uh, in a few moments. So once again, we have a situation where hopefully the masses, whether you're black, white, Asian, Latino, LGBTQ, uh, gay, straight, whatever you are, a Christian, Muslim, uh, Jewish, they'll come for any of us. And if you want to bank on being a part of that club, as George Carlin used to say, it's a big club and you're not in it, and sell your soul when they have no use for you anymore, <laughs> your days are numbered and they'll do to you what you've done to others. I would stay away from it. And uh, if you have to live what is a, a limited financial existence on this planet, uh, I have accepted that role uh, because I used to be a news reporter and I just decided I wasn't going to allow myself to be a part of that type of organization or company, corporation, that involves the self in such behavior that just didn't work for me and went against my spirit. And so the reality is, is a lot of people were involved in a lot of illegal activities, some of which have passed away and whatever, happens after you leave this physical plane, I'll, I don't know. And I don't know if they'll ever pay for what they've done because no one has come back and shared that with anybody. So nobody knows for sure. You can go by these books that these religions follow, but none of it's confirmed. And so it's uh, a troubling, but uh, it's not surprising that people like Malcolm X was targeted only after, and hear what I'm saying, he went on his pilgrimage to Mecca in Saudi Arabia, which all Muslims are supposed to do as far as I know, because I'm not well versed in Islam. And prior to that, he was known as someone that some people consider as divisive, someone that was full of hate and rage. And if you know about his history of, you know, his childhood, then you would understand that he called white people devils. And he said all white peoples were devils. And that was based on his experience, even from the start of his childhood when his father was murdered by the Ku Klux Klan. And so he didn't have a lot to go on other than how white people could abuse, mistreat people that have never done anything to him. And then when his mother went to collect the life insurance, she was denied. So she was destitute and had very little resources to raise children and she ended up in a mental institution. And that's basically how Malcolm started his life in this country. And a lot of us uh, realized that in the 60s, uh, the civil rights movement, movement was very, very active. And African Americans were being denied full citizenship in this country, were being beaten, lynched, and uh, mistreated as, at levels very similar to slavery. So it's not hard to understand why uh, he hated white people. But after he went to Mecca, he actually saw white people in the religion of Islam. 
And it was then he had this conversion. And when he returned to the United States, he no longer uh, labeled all white people devils because of his experience. That may have been his biggest downfall. If you ever want to see the alphabet agencies and the manipulators come after you, start preaching unity. And so when he came back and he wasn't preaching hate and he was preaching love and unity, he became a greater target. And that is backed up by many other people. If you're not familiar with Fred Hampton of the Black Panther Party in Chicago, he would go to poor whites that hated blacks and said, the same people that deny us opportunity and resources and a, a decent living are the same people that are denying you those things. And it has nothing to do with African Americans. And he was uniting people that appeared to be opposed to each other based on race. He had no problem even going to the Ku Klux Klan or people who professed to follow them and to convert them into unifying with the Black Panther Party to ensure that everyone had rights and was treated uh, justly and fairly. Well, we know that the Chicago Police Department was involved in his murder and assassination, and they actually had a settlement for their role in his murder. We know that Dr. Rep. Martin Luther King Jr., he marched with white, black, uh, Jewish, uh, a Gentile, if you want to call Christians that. Uh, he saw the value of working together with any and everybody who believed in justice and equality. You see what happened to him. And the list is relatively long. John F. Kennedy, he didn't want much to do with the Vietnam War. Military industrial complex wasn't having it. They loved to kill people and they loved to make money killing people. And when John F. Kennedy didn't go along with that program, here's a white man, gone, assassinated in daylight. Now, the information is coming out and it, that is implicating the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency. And if you know anything about that agency and their involvement in overthrowing government, especially in Central and South America and other areas on the planet, we know what kind of people are employed in that agency and what they're capable of doing. I mean, if I got large and my numbers was off the charts, I would be on their radar you know, in a kind of a weird way. I'm kind of glad that I don't have a lot of subscribers at this stage. I wish I did have more. But the reality is, is you get on their radar and you start talking about uniting and with the masses, and you hear me talk about the masses all the time, you become a tremendous a danger to their program, to the way they control us. And so uh, you got to be very careful when you approach these subjects. We know that Robert Kennedy was all about peace and unity. If you know what happened to him. And I can just go on and on and on on the number of people that were decent, peace-loving, caring, uh, want the best for all, for all uh, Americans, how they were either annihilated or, you know, as a murder, uh, or their reputations and their ability to make a living was uh, denied and destroyed. So, it's kind of difficult to take on these challenges. The part that really I find troubling and just really kind of hurts me to my heart, the three dominant religions, Christianity, 
Islam, Judaism. Man, their God appears to me to be really weak because their God will never support and really have the back of these powerful leaders and people of influence that are trying to represent what these books, the Bible and Quran and uh, whatever, I forgot, the Torah, are supposedly representing, at least the New Testament and the Bible, uh, love thy brother and all the things that come along with that uh, religion. But when it comes time, and you know what happened to Jesus, I mean, he got a good beat down uh, in front of everybody and a lot of people turned against him uh, at his very time of need. So it's so hard sometimes to believe in something good like, you know, a god or a deity, when they allow these evil people to constantly beat us down, uh, mistreat us, uh, murder us. And so sometimes people just say, why would I even go that route? You see what happens to those people and you can't blame them. I mean, at some point, if your spirit's not strong enough to stand on some level of morality and ethics, why would you stand for love and unity when you see what happens to those people? And if you go the other way, oh man, you enjoy the, the joys, I guess you can call it that, and pleasures of uh, being rich and being able to, you know, manipulate other people. And some people believe, oh yeah, but uh, in the afterlife, they go to hell. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times, slaves or people in the civil rights movement are saying, <laughs> I'm already in hell, uh, hell on earth. So I don't know if it can get much worse. So believing in hell and heaven, that's your call. And I don't have a problem with people believing that. At one time, I believed it wholeheartedly. But now I'm like, whatever. Uh, if it is, it is. If it's not, then, you know, who cares? So I kind of, you know, digress and went off on a tangent, kind of apologize for that. But one thing I'm very concerned about is Benjamin Crump. And the reason I'm very concerned about him is, I don't know, but when you start making inroads like he has, when you start getting in the spotlight like he's in, and you start achieving the success rate that he has, they can come after you, you know? And there are people, I don't even know if they're people, I don't know if they're human beings, I don't know what kind of life form they are, but uh, they will um, intervene in your life, your existence. And to go after the CIA and the FBI and NYPD, you're taking a major chance with your life and the life of others. I just, you know, I believe in my heart. I can't prove it, but just from the behavior of like COINTELPRO uh, throughout the 60s and 70s, uh, and probably prior to that, uh, they will do things that if they don't kill you, they'll, you know, try to destroy you. Uh, financially, they'll try to uh, just, you know, go after your reputation. <sighs> These people, uh, I don't know what they are. They just the personification of evil. And, uh, you know, uh, there's some lawyers that in the past, I don't know if you guys remember, <laughs> but uh, Johnny Cochran. And some of you uh, may know that it's supposedly reported that he died from brain cancer. But when he got OJ off, ooh, that upset a lot of white people. And uh, he got uh, Geronimo Pratt out of jail, a member of the Black Panther Party, supposedly convicted of, I believe, 
murdering a police officer. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the reason why he was in jail. I believe he had a life sentence and Johnny Cochran got him out and he was a free man. You know that upset a lot of people that are in the power structure and that would like to send a message to people. Don't try to stand up against us. Don't try to defy the system because we'll put a world of hurt on you. You even have politicians that have actually spoke out loud about be careful if you go after these alphabet agencies because they have seven ways to Sunday to you know put a hurt on you. And I paraphrase, that's not the quotes. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's, it's a very dangerous field to be in. And uh, it it's, can be very scary because if you have loved ones, they can go after them. And, uh, you know, it's just not you when you make choices to do certain things that you're not the only one that can suffer the repercussions of your actions. So I just wish that the uh, people that believe in Christianity and Islam and Judaism, I just wish their God would step up to the plate and really, you know, support and, and protect leaders that, you know, stand up to the powers that be. But for some odd reason, uh, they're persona non grata. They are nowhere to be seen. I just, it's it's mind-boggling to me. And then you get some people that justify in their mind why these people, uh, how they actually ch made change and, and did their part and then, you know, transitioned. But to me, that's not a good look. You know, and just because, you know, you got the Civil Rights Bill passed in 64 and the Voting Rights Act passed in uh, 65 and the Fair Housing Act passed in 68. In today's society, we're still fighting for the same three things. <laughs> so, I mean, you're talking that 60 years later, the same battle is continuing. I'm not impressed by any deity that's got out back and that's the result of our work and uh, dedication but once again I digress oh but so let's get back to the lawsuit so Ben Crump has filed the 100 million dollar lawsuit against the CIA the FBI the NYPD what happens uh, next is anybody's guess because I'm not sure what the legal framework is to be able to sue those agencies and if it even looks like uh, they're getting close to having that ability to sue them i think there's going to be some intervention by probably the president of the united states to uh you know let them off the hook and protect them and that's just me guessing but again these are powerful agencies. Many of them believe they're more powerful than God himself or herself, however you want to label that uh, power that uh, many people believe in. Uh, the reality is, is uh, we're in uh, an area that no one kind of knows how this will play out. But to me, is it worth it? Of course, because you never know. And uh, you gotta, I believe in my heart, be willing to try to stand because we are now entering into a phase where any and everybody is susceptible to what these manipulators have in store for us. In the future, I'll do a video on the 15 minute cities and some of you are going to be, get out of here. I don't even believe that. It's already happening. The uh, digital ID cards, that's coming, my prediction. And that'll probably happen this year. And uh, you pretty much are going to be under the control of a button that if you don't do what you're told, you will be cut off from all of your assets. You won't have any type of currency to do any transactions. 
and you will be isolated and virtually uh, destroyed uh, for not following orders from some crazy group of people that many of us don't even know their names, but I do. And if I have a chance, I'll make a video about that. Because I got to be honest with you guys, you may be calling me an alarmist, I don't know how much time we got left. And when we talk about these digital IDs, in Canada, just last year, 2022, when they had the great protest, the truckers pretty much stopped all activity in that country. They targeted the leaders, froze their bank accounts, even when they raised money through GoFundMe, GoFundMe wouldn't release the money, so they were under control by these manipulators. And then they were being put in jail, and then they were denied all kind of uh, legal representation. Uh, it, if you want to call it, it's brilliant evil. I mean, it is just at a level that some of us can't imagine because it doesn't affect us. We're living well, we're comfortable. We got all the electronic devices and we watch our favorite TV shows or sports events and the uh, refrigerator is full and the air condition and heat is working and we're driving a nice car. So that's not gonna affect me or some people say that, that doesn't affect uh, anyone that I know. And so we're not going to even attempt to do anything or find out what's coming our way. But one day you guys are going to wake up and say, oh my God, I had no idea. And all of this, we kind of hanging on a nail and just don't realize that if they actually did a cyber attack, whether it be our own government or China, Russia, or Iran, or North Korea. And these nations have a lot of beef with this country and would love to retaliate in any way that they can. The reality is, is the nation would shut down overnight, a cyber attack. As much as we depend on our electronic devices and connectivity, if there was a cyber attack, your credit cards wouldn't work anymore. Most of you have given up on cash. If there's a cyber attack, your phone won't work anymore. Your television won't work anymore. Food won't be delivered to grocery stores anymore. It, people don't even begin to realize how bad it can get in such a short period of time. And that's why I make these videos. That's why I try to tell people, get involved before it's too late. I believe in living the American dream. I do it every day. You know that I've been on three cruises in the last three months. In my other videos, you know that I engage in uh, activities like yoga classes and exercising and playing golf and flying drones and watching my favorite television programs and, you know looking at YouTube videos and involved in business transactions that could be beneficial to me and the people I care about you guys know that I'm living the American dream and, and love every minute of it but I also realize how this whole thing could just fall to pieces in a matter of minutes. And when I hear people like Klaus Schwab uh, talking about a cyber attack that's coming, and this is the very guy that kind of gave us some uh, insight and indication on a pandemic that we just went through for two and a half years. Uh, my ears are wide open, and with one of the spokespersons of the WEF, World Economic Forum, uh, Yobel Nari, uh, I'm sorry, Yuval Noah Harari, a, what I 
consider a madman. He's talking about humans are expendable. They are valueless. There's no need for us anymore. And then they're talking about merging humans with machines and putting chips in your brain. And, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, God, I've had enough. I don't want to hear anymore. I want to just go back to my favorite program or play my favorite games and just, you know, just kind of not experience or deal with reality. And I'm not trying to turn anybody off. I'm just saying, guys. You don't want to wait until they knock on your door to kind of, you know, wake you up and probably be too late at that time. And nobody will be safe, especially the hard working class, the middle class, people that are experiencing already hell on earth, that are dealing with poverty at a level that most of us don't even understand or imagine it could be that bad. Homelessness is off the charts. So again, I digress, I went off on a tangent, back to the lawsuit against the CIA, the NYPD, and the FBI for the murder slash assassination of Malcolm X, known as El Haj Malik El Shabazz. I applaud Benjamin Crump. I pray for his safety. I don't know if prayer works, but I do believe in prayer and meditation. And I applaud the fact that the daughters uh, are going to just let this go and they're constantly pursuing this uh, justice uh, for what happened to their father, one of the great leaders, icons of the 19th century, he, or the 1900s to 20th century, he was fearless and he stood tall and he did the what he could to change the direction of America. He was so fierce that he was feared by so pow so many powerful people that they decided to go with Dr. Red Martin Luther King Jr. rather than go with probably uh, another civil war in this country. I mean, you had groups like Black Panthers. They weren't a violent group. They just believed in uh, self-determination and, uh, you know, being able to secure safety and security in their communities. Uh, they were all about breakfast programs. They were about educating uh, the children and young adults in the community. They were about free health care. Well, you know they had to be eliminated. COINTELPRO was very successful in doing that. Uh, you had uh, the Weather Underground. They were involved in bombings, or at least that's what we're told. Uh, I don't, you know, agree with that. But that was basically a white group. Uh, yeah, had, uh, I believe it was the Sibonese Black uh, Organization. I probably may not have the name right, uh, but they kidnapped Patty Hearst. Some of you too young to even know anything about that. And uh, a lot of groups were resorting to self-defense, if that's the way you want to look at it, or violence, as others will look at it. And you still had other groups that uh, were involved in the uh, protests of the Vietnam War and what they were willing to do and stand up against. If some of you don't know, look it up. The uh, Democratic uh, primary or the Democratic, uh, I think it was when they were picking the uh, person that, or nominating the uh, person that would represent the Democratic Party in Chicago in 1968. There was police out there beating down white people uh, like it was a holiday. And so they were very concerned in the 60s that there would be a second civil uh, war in this country. And so when the masses get together, and I'm not saying be violent, but if you just do certain things, like when they just had this uh, protest in Washington, D.C., Rage Against the War Machine, they had people from all walks of life with different political views 
you can bet the people that were speakers there and people that were leading and organizing this event, they are under tremendous scrutiny. Uh, I believe they're being targeted for death. Uh, I, that's just their behavior. Uh, the only thing, not the only thing, but one of the main concerns that the manipulators have is people coming together. When you have those numbers, they know they can't stop you. Uh, but when they can divide you and then pit you against each other, they know that they can defer the attention from themselves and have you fighting over crumbs. And so this lawsuit once again sends a message that no matter what you do, and no matter how long it takes, you may be someone that has to answer for your deeds. Guys, I want to thank you for checking in. I didn't want to go as long as I did, but once I get started, I have so much to say. I just want to share it with each and every one of you. But thank you. And if you would, continue to subscribe for this channel and many others out there that are trying to do work that is very meaningful and valuable. And so if you can't help out with money, then you can help out with a click. You can like the videos that you see. You can share the videos. Uh, you can comment on the videos. And you can make your own videos. Or you can get out and pound the pavement. Do whatever you can, whatever is in your ability. If you don't like margin, then you send ten dollars. If uh, hundred thousand people send ten dollars, that's a million dollars to a channel, and then that channel can expand, and that channel can hire other people of like minds. And so there's a lot of ways to stand up against the machine and send a message that you guys don't need to go this route, the manipulators. Many of us don't care if you're rich. We care, we care if you're rich by making others poor. And that is something that's not a necessity. So thank you guys for checking in once again. And be there or watch this whole thing unfold in your very front of your eyes. And one day you might be asking yourself, I should have got involved. Why didn't I? Talk to you soon.